probably the Okay, end. thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Um, the official press conference, DHL Western Province versus Vodacom Bulls. The floor is open. Okay, guy. Uh, uh, good afternoon. A um, couple of changes here, especially uh, the, the Paranta, the first choice guys are back. Uh, yeah, Ashok, um, I've been very lucky. I've been able to, the whole, not only the season, the whole year since I've been here, I've been able to re rejig the front row. So, uh, Simpiwi got a bit of a bang on the shoulder last week. Um, nothing too serious, but I mean, for a prop, when you have a bit of a inflamed AC joint, it's probably not ideal. So, he gets a rest. He'll probably be, be, be back next week. So, Lizo comes into his place, and then the front row has just changed. So, that the two props who who were on the bench last week, get a start this week. And yeah, as I said, I mean, lucky enough to be able to change those those front rankers from week to week. And concerning the, the, the province scrum, Jake, um, do you think it's the right time to bring them back in terms of that challenge? Um, uh, obviously, province with a win last week, they, they're a bit more confident this time around. Yeah, Ashok. Sure. I mean, I um, look. I think to be fair, they're very good props. The the province props. I think they, you know, probably haven't played as much as they would have liked. I think based on the fact you have Kitsov and Malherbe keeping them out every single week, and we're talking about you know two World Cup winners. So, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sure they've they've got a great reputation. Um, and uh, you know, Leon Lyons and and obviously Nietlin for sure have have you know served their time at Western Province as well. And I think it's nice that they're getting some game time. But yeah, it's been a nice tussle. Um, you know, those guys, my guys, Mornay and Gerard, have scrummed. I think last time we played at Cape Town Stadium, we played against Kitsov and Malherba. So, you know, they, they have scrummed against the Springbok front row. Um, I'm hoping now the lessons they learned that week and obviously all the time that they've been together, they can take into this game. Afternoon, Jake. Uh, um, if I have a look at the... Uh Curry Cup table, um, uh, there's, there's one point difference between you and the Sharks. Yes. This is obviously an opportunity to make uh, big inroads this weekend and uh, um, try, to, try to, to make amends for what you guys had uh, suffered during, during the periods that you couldn't play. Yeah, Simon, I, look, I mean, I think you all remember we were in Benetton the last time we played Province. They got five points at Loftus, so it's going to be a big game for us. Um, and it's never, ever, e never easy playing the North-South Derby in, in Cape Town. I mean, whether you play Cape Town Stadium or Newland. So, um, and it's not a case just so much to... I mean, I'm very happy where we are considering we had one point after one game. Um, and we had to play two, two sort of teams in that weekend. So, yeah, I mean, to be one point behind. We've probably been a bit fortunate, Simon. You know, we had uh, COVID hit Free State. Uh, so we got, we got, you know, we obviously got four points there. We were asked by SA Rugby and missed out the Greek was game, so got four points there. So we're probably a little bit fortunate, but it's nice to get back and play rugby. So I'm looking forward to it. You can see it's not a really, you know, really nice team we've put together. I, I think I'm looking forward to seeing how they play tomorrow at, at Newlands. Jake, uh, you touched on it last week, and Dabo spoke about it this week, how important the game or significant the game playing at Newlands is for them. Um, my question is, how do you take the emotion out of it? Because obviously it's, it's important that you actually just play the game and, and not get caught up to the whole occasion of playing at Newlands. Uh, look, yeah, I mean, I we, we used that line last time, said we're going to be the, the team that beats Province the last time at Newlands, and then it wasn't. I mean, COVID came and announced the, it was the second last time at, at, at Newlands. And who knows, maybe the Curry Cup Finals at Newlands again. I mean, never, we never know. So... Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I make a thing of it because I think it's important. I think second oldest rugby ground in the world. Some, some unbelievable players have played there. Some unbelievable games have taken place there. And, you know, we all want to be part of that. We want to make sure we have some sort of part in, in the history of Newlands. I mean, you watch, I'm sure you have, you watch a couple of those documentaries and you listen to some of the great players talking about Newlands. You know, Jean de Villiers, Kalkberger, H.O. de Villiers. You know, the names just roll off the tongue when you talk about you know, the great players who've played there. So, yeah, I mean, it's uh, you know, it's not an over and emotional thing. It's just a wonderful opportunity to play at a, at a rugby ground that has massive amounts of history. And uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way, we have an opportunity to write a little bit more history there, you know, and that's what's so nice about it. But, you know, what, what we're looking for, Jan, is just a, a great performance. Um, you know, we're building and building and building and, and we're playing some good rugby. Um, now we play against another team in, in, you know, in another weekend. And I'm hoping that, 
the sort of lessons we're learning from, from week to week, we can we can improve. You know, it doesn't matter who we play against, just make sure we get better. So, so Jake, is it could repeat itself if you win again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's hope so, Ashwak. But as I said, I mean, things have <laughs> things have been so so bizarre for a long time. I mean, I, I thought that Newlands was closed last game, and now again, yeah, we're talking about playing on. And it's fantastic. I mean, I'm not, I'm not anti it. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I, I have some wonderful memories at Newlands, having coached against the All Blacks there and coached against Australia there and watched Ron Stain kick two drop goals there and win, win the Tri Nation. So, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's wonderful. I, I, I'm glad that some of these young guys get an opportunity to, to, to it's pity there aren't any crowds because that's, that's obviously an added element of, of Newlands. But, you know, it's, a, it's another opportunity, and, and I think. You know, not taking anything away from the the traditions of the ground and the ethos of the ground and the values that that ground, you know, or the the symbolic value of that ground. Uh, we just want to play well, Ashwak. I, I really just want us to play well. I want us to build. We, you know, there's six games left now before the playoffs, and uh, we got some guys coming back. And as you see, the sevens boys, you know, they'll be joining us next week. So it's a great opportunity for us to get our squad, you know, in sync going into these last couple of games. Jake, okay, one thing of Nilens uh, is, is the surface. I think, uh, given we saw what happened in the test last week, I think uh, the surface at Nilens is, from the old days to now, it's definitely a, a better rugby playing surface. Yeah, yeah, and again, I don't want to be critical, but I mean, there is there is a massive difference between playing Cape Town Stadium and Nilens. I mean, the grass is different. Uh, you know, one was a football field, one is a cricket, f- I mean, a rugby field. Uh, yeah, I, and and I mean we enjoyed our we enjoy our outings at Cape Town Stadium, but it is a different stadium, you know. And it's not so much the crowd; it's just the underfoot slipping and sliding. It's probably a little bit more of a leveler at at, uh, at Cape Town Stadium. Um, yeah, and so you know, Newlands it was made for rugby. Um, I don't, I, you know, again, we were there the other day training um, training before the SAA game. We actually used it as a training venue because it was a bit of a bubble, and we're allowed to go in there. So we also, as I said, lucky enough two weeks ago to actually use it as a training facility. So, you know, it's not, it's not, it's another opportunity to be on that, on that very, very special ground. Jake, I'm almost a bit tongue in cheek. Sorry. Um, um, are you going to have your inspirational water boy from last week, you know, in harness again, or are you without him this week? Yeah, look, I think he's only, only there for home games. I don't think he wants to say he goes away on weight games. I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, the fact that we it was in Pretoria, you know, Heinz, I mean, it's not tongue in cheek at all. He's, he's really working hard on trying to get back into shape and try and get himself available for selection. Um, so he spends his time, even though he's based in Cape Town, I'm talking about his family, he bases him, himself in, in, in Pretoria at the, at the medical, you know, the medical department there with us and our medical staff trying to get him right. So, you know, to go, I mean, it's not, it's not a gimmick at all. I mean, he was there and he wanted to be part of it, but He's got other things he's got to focus on on Thursday, Friday, Saturday this week to make sure that he's that he's obviously going to get better for the next couple of weeks. So yeah, hindsight. Uh, I would like to have him here. I think he's a great value to us. I think he, you know players enjoy his voice on the field and the, and his calmness on the field. But you know, I think more it was more just because he was at home and he and he obviously could do his his rehab in the morning and then he could probably do the game and then do some more rehab in the the next day. Whereas to take three, four days out of your schedule or three full days out of your schedule with traveling and game time, probably not ideal. Jake, you've got your captain that. back. Um, uh, sorry, uh, you've got your captain back, Marshall Kutsia. Uh, and and with, with the rain in Cape Town, it's probably going to be wet and slippery, so breakdown battle is going to be huge. And and province also got a, a, a captain or a former captain, Dion Furry, back on the bench, and Juan de Jong, a lot of experience there. Yeah, and and I mean, and last week played really well on the in the breakdown as well. I mean, you know, the loose forwards they've picked are, are hard on the ball. I mean, even Russ is playing some good rugby. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like it's it's it, you know the conditions are probably going to be you know conducive to the fact that those kind of players are going to have to have good games. You know, so and and Dion Ferry, I mean, I, I watched him when he was in France. He played really good rugby as well. So you know, the fact that he's there it means it's not, that it means that's not going to go away. Whoever they take off is you know that that intensity at the breakdown is going to be as as strong as it's going to be in the beginning of the game. But you know, that's just one area of the game we've probably got to try and control and like like them. And then there's other areas of the game that we've got to make sure we we can at least you know get some some rewards as well. Um, Jake, Jake. Just on um, on Dwayne again. I mean, regardless of where he stands, you know, in terms of international selection and stuff, it must have been just been such an inspiration once again, you know, to the rest of his teammates, just to see 
how he still continually conducts himself and how he just really is trying to get back onto the field. You know, yeah. um, it must just add to the legend almost that is Dwayne Vermeulen. Yeah, Heinz, you know, I don't want to wax lyrical about the guy. I've only known him for a short space, but I mean, a World Cup winner and man of the match in a World Cup final. And, you know, I use him, I use him a lot as a as a example to the players. I mean, he lives in Cape Town and, and he chose to do his rehab in Pretoria, you know. He likes Gio Aplon the same, you know. Gio Aplon's still there getting his rehab. In, I mean, they, they epitomize everything a coach wants, you know. They want to get back on the field. They 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 at the club all the time they they you know if it means carrying water on match day or Gia Aplon standing watching the you know the back three training or whether he's in the gym talking to you know someone that's also going through a difficult time Sintu Mangesi who's now going through you know obviously an ACL injury as well and 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 building him up from the point of view listen you know you're young and you're going to your opportunities are still going to come I mean those, those things Heinz it's those are all the things that people don't see but but are, as a coach are are as important, if not sometimes more important than actually what happens on the field, you know. So, yeah, Dwayne is, I mean, as I said, I, don't, I haven't known him a long time. You know, obviously he wants to play rugby, but the fact that he's there and the fact that he wants to be part of it and the fact he comes down to watch training sessions and, and you know, not asked, but but come down and, and, yeah, sometimes, you know, I've got to say to him, okay, you don't have to give too much advice because, uh, like everybody, I suppose he can, he can, you know, wants to get involved, but... It's wonderful to to curb enthusiasm as opposed to try and get guys to show enthusiasm, and that's that's I mean that sums him up for me is that he's uh, you know he's, yeah as I said he's he's important. I mean you see now we didn't we didn't not play like we did last week only because we played well. It's also because we had his calmness and players see him there and they get confidence out of the fact that he wants to be part of the club and you know that's that I suppose every coach and every club wants to have those people around us. Jake, it's storming at the moment here in Cape Town. Can can your golden boy Hosen turn on the magic in the wet? Ah, uh, Ashfak, he can turn it on whenever you want. He can turn it on on uh, Friday evening, Saturday afternoon, summer time, winter time, twelve jersey, thirteen jersey, anything you want. You know, so I'm not going to give him the the curse of death. Uh, he's a, uh, I mean, in two weeks, everyone's talking about him. I mean, it shows you he's just literally played two games of rugby for the Bulls, and everyone's talking about you know what he can do. So Ashfak, I. You know, I've given him free reign. Um, he knows what he's got to do. I trust him well enough. I've watched him play in France in, in Paris. I've watched him play in the rain. I've watched him play on grounds like Brive. I've watched him play, you know, on hard surfaces like at Racing Metro. So I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it's not just him. I'm looking forward to him and Harold and Lionel together. I'm looking forward to Cornell on the wing. You know, I'm looking forward next week to having Kurtley and Stedman Hans back. So things are things are exciting at uh, at uh, at the Bulls. Rush, right? It's uh, some great, some great time for us now. But you know, the most important thing is that I want us to play well tomorrow at Newlands and and keep that momentum going. Jake, can I put you on the spot a little bit and just uh, off uh, our focus? Um, Mornay Stein is not on the bench. For yes. The yes. And I know, and I know, you you rate Mornay as well. Yes, and we've spoken about your your um, um, your number tens and and the and the value that you have with your number tens. Yes. Of all, um, what what did you as a as a coach? You've been there and you've been um, with your back against the wall. What what would go through the the, the players' um, minds, and obviously the the um, the the coaching team as well. And a guy like Mornay, would he lose um, uh, faith in his ability or is is he that type of guy that would come back and come back and come back? I suppose it's the latter. Simon, you know, it's funny. I just spoke to him for about 10 minutes ago. I spoke to him. I phoned him on the phone and I asked him what is his plan. And I'll tell you why I asked him. I wasn't sure. And I'm, I mean, I've asked him to find out and I will I will find out myself as well. So I don't want you to think that I'm, I'm sort of being backhanded, yeah? But I, I wasn't sure if the squad with COVID was picked for the Lions series or whether this extended squad was picked uh, to stay together for an extended period of time. So, you know, I'm not sure whether I can have his services come next Saturday night or next Sunday post the third test match or whether or not um, he stays in the bubble. And I, again, I'm, 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 I'm over-exaggerating the fact that with that bubble, I'm not sure whether coming in and out or whether keeping what you have is is the is the logical thing. So, 
if if they if they're staying, then obviously I don't need to plan that I'm going to be having him around, and I need to then you know obviously work out what we're going to do at the Bulls. But the reason I'm sharing it with you, I think that he's probably going to need some game time soon, um, just because I think that he needs to play. Um, I know that initially, Simon, I had a chat to Rassi long ago uh, when he when he gave us a call about bigger squads and COVID and. And SAA, at that point in time, SAA were going to play and there might have been sort of almost two squads, if you know what I'm talking about. Enough players for two teams. The idea was that there was, there was some idea or discussion about the fact that some players may be released back to the unions to get some game time. So to answer your question, Simon, a guy like him, you know, I would love to start using him when I can. Um, uh, and I'd like to give him some game time. If, if he's not available, then obviously I will... You know, we'll still continue with what I have and 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 work around with what I have. Um, in terms of his personality, I I don't think you need to worry about him. I think that he, deep down, is is over the moon about the fact that he's still in there with a chance. Um, his personality is one of I've I've got no doubt that he would want the team to win the series anyway. I mean, I'm sure, like all boys, he would love to kick the winning kick in the second test as he did in in years gone by but but i mean knowing him simon he wants to win um he would want to be part of another successful lions campaign and and if it means that he's number 45 of a 45 man squad his personality isn't uh, as such that he would want to get all the limelight so yeah you know, i <coughs> i suppose in a long roundabout way what i'm saying to you is he he's, he's a fighter and the fact that he's still at his age and still you know, after what he's done, still has the desire to be there and be part of it, shows what kind of guy he is. Um, selfishly, I'd like to use him if I can, a couple of games. But, you know, I also understand with COVID guys coming in and out of bubbles and, and all that sort of thing that we might not be that fortunate that we, we uh, as the Bulls, would get to guy services of that guy for one or two games to keep him sharp. Jake, uh, there's photos going around this week of you and a rather tall blonde uh, gentleman standing around <laughs> at Loftus. Yes, Jan, for a moment, uh, when, there, for when moment there, I thought you were going to say some blonde bird. I was going to say, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we passed those days. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, J- Jake, uh, when, when do we see him coming into selection frame? Uh, Jan, I, um, look, let me quickly just give you a bit of background as to him. I suppose that um, he would want to play tomorrow if he could. You know, he would. Uh, he's told me, Coach, he's, I can't wait to play. You know, um, but he's got. A, he's got. A, he hasn't got an injury. He's got um, uh, almost like a stiffness or a, a sort of red flag on his Achilles. And you know, he's got with his Achilles history. I mean, the one. This is the other Achilles. The other, the one Achilles has already snapped. Um, and just from a precautionary point of view, he's played lots of rugby in, in the French league. He sort of played fronted up every Saturday. Um, and so we just said, we just said to him, look, we're not going to use you until we feel like you, you know, almost a hundred percent, uh, risk free of, of playing. So to answer your question, Jan, you know, I think he probably could play tomorrow, but we will just hold him back. I would think probably if it's not next week it will definitely be in the week after that so you know if he he could go to durban next week if all things go well but you know again if he's not if he's not 100 percent, probably the following week where we do play greek was and the lions in that week we basically got two games that week so i'm hoping that when the back end of those that those sort of games come that he's ready you know okay any more questions gentlemen thank you very much all right. Thanks, thanks, Jake. Thanks, guys. Thank Jake, you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jake. Thank you.